in this video, uh, we have Hash Lifts, Daniel. He's back with us, and we're going to talk about 721 contracts, ERC721, and how you can get started using those. Hey, Daniel, how's it going? Welcome back. Hey, JC, how's it going? Thank you for having me back. I'm really excited about today's topic. Yeah, yeah. So ERC721 contracts, there's a there's some variations. We'll talk about 721A as, as well. But um, that, that, that really is kind of like the starter contract, right? And like, what can you do with a 721 contract? Well, yeah, I, I would see it as the the standard contract, the, you know, the, the normal beginning one that everyone kicks off in. And uh, what you can do with the 721, it's basically the standard for non-fungible tokens, right? Uh, people get to mint their own tokens, set different prices, um, even have different stages where you mint your NFTs. But as a basic, you know, start off point, you would most likely use a 721 um, as the standard for an NFT, unless you're going something wild. Um, but that is the standard. And the original 721 was using innumerable. So we also have a new standard coming out, right? Or that's already out. Yeah. So that's the 721A, right? Absolutely. So the 721A, you know, has been um, kind of introduced into the space and that is mainly to reduce the minting cost. So uh, I believe that instead of making the 721 your base, I think people should focus on 721A uh, just simply for those gas consumption reasons. And it's, it's really cheap then to mint NFTs um, on one of these contracts. So how it does that is it replaces the innumerable, uh, you know, functionality from the old one and uses counters instead of keeping track of the the amount of tokens. And and what about like like customizing contracts? Like should I, I would I would um say that a beginner should just use the standard and try to you know don't don't customize it but you know uh, what what could you do to customize uh, one of these contracts? Oh wow. So <laughs> I'm saying wow because the the possibilities are really endless. So when you look at a contract, all it is is a yeah. mechanism of keeping track of who owns how many tokens. So when you want to implement extra logic, for instance, you can say this token can merge with another one and then we burn a token to kind of merge the two. Uh, you can potentially create a contract that um, decreases in the amount that's left to mint. Um, something that increases, something that incentivizes the users or holders to uh, maybe get some funds back. Refundable stuff can be implemented. So um, the the actual limits are endless uh, with any of these contracts. It's all up to the imagination. And you'll see them coming out, you know, on a regular basis. Someone has invented a new contract and now everyone's jumping on that bandwagon. Um, but for beginners, start off with 721A. You're going to get great gas consumption and you're going to be fine, you know, doing your first NFT contract with 721A. Yeah, I um, I, br I bring that up because like the 721 and 721A, those are, you know, the, the baseline. They've been, uh, they're, they're tried and true. They've been tested. Um, and so uh, you can you can add things to contracts. I, I love seeing those contracts where, uh, like you said, the price increases or decreases or the strange things uh, just because once you uh, implement that contract, it's you can't change it again down the road, and so that that is going to be uh, how this this contract works forever. And so it's cool to see all of these different uh, iterations. But of course, you know, back to you know, if you're a beginner, just start with the basic one and go from there. And then whatever your imagination you 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 can come up with, um, and uh, Come up with some really cool things i've seen some really cool things out there so yeah you know that's so true just keep in mind that it is immutable so whatever you put on the blockchain be prepared that it's going to be there for you know for a very long time um, because you can't just change anything after deploying and if you choose a 721a mm -hmm. contract make sure that you get it from a reputable source because there's a lot of contracts out there that could have been hacked or compromised in some way so always use something like Open Zeppelin standard. Um, there's a lot of standards that you can use out there. You know, on our tutorials, we also show you where you can get access to tried and proved contracts. So just make, just keep that in mind for anyone out there who wants to use uh, these contracts. 
yeah that that was the last little point uh, that i wanted to bring up was just uh make sure that you you get the you know the actual contract and um and, and if you're a developer read through it like you can read through it just make sure there's nothing fishy in there um but again if you get it from a reputable source uh you should be good to go yeah and so uh is, anything you want to add to that i think that pretty much covers the 721 contract yeah and i i would encourage people to go and play around with it in the uh test networks so if you if you are someone that's adventurous try some new stuff out just do it on the test networks and always write test for these contracts sometimes they come automatic with them um you know in projects but just be 100 percent sure that you've tested and tried it out before taking it into production and that's it jesse i think everyone should tr uh, start trying exactly it <laughs> and and if you want to learn how to try it out in, in remix uh, go check out that video on hashlip's youtube channel as well so that's going to be it for today uh, i'll see you guys in the next one um see you later Daniel. cheers jc see you later cheers